Illustrator's powerful type handling capabilities and it, the vector scalability of its output make it the go-to choice for most logo designers. Um, if you're not familiar with the work of Herb Lubalin, uh, he was one of the great logo designers of all time. Um, he died in 1981. And he made these wonderful, amazing typographic logos before the era of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, he had to draw everything by hand, and he was a master letter artist. Uh, we have it much easier today, but we can, we can learn a lot from studying the way that he thought about type. Right now, we're going to show how we could recreate his famous families logo in Adobe Illustrator. The typeface Lubalin used was a common one then. It is still in common use today, Helvetica Black. And if we just type our logo, our, our, our word out in Helvetica Black, you can see quite a few differences. For example, the dots on the eyes have been replaced. The middle three letters have been modified and the spacing has been modified. Now some of this would be fairly easy to do in Quark Express. The first thing we notice is that the spacing is very, very condensed in Lobalin's logo. And this could be this could be changed fairly easily in, in many other programs such as InDesign uh, by simply using the tracking field here. I'm going to leave it at minus 50 because I want to do some fine adjusting in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and create outlines. Uh, this is quite uh, important because I want to be able to edit the letters in the middle and I want to be able to replace these rectangular dots on the eye with round dots. And uh, creating outlines is very powerful and almost all logo work you do, you will create outlines on it before you turn it over to the client, even if you have not modified the type. This is because they may or may not have the typeface that you have. So let's go to um, view, outline view, or command Y. We select it with a selection tool and then choose type create outlines. Perfect. Before we go further, I'm going to ungroup it so that I can deal with every letter individually. Ungroup. Okay, now uh, going back, command Y, so that I can see what I've got. It's obvious that the F is way, way too far away. And as we pull it in, we see some differences, and Lubalin probably hand drew this, so it wasn't exactly the typeface. And we can go back and do some modifying on the F a little bit later to try and open this space up here. But right now I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm just going to pull that M in. I'm, I'm going to do these one by one because I want to look at each letter pair and get it as close as I can. So you can see, even after the tracking, there's a lot of individual work to be done here. And as I said, Lubalin did not use the exact typeface. He did some drawing. And as we zero in on this, we start to see some of the subtleties that he created. For example, on the E and the S on the typeface, they don't line up quite perfectly. And on his, they do. Well, we can fix that. That one's actually a pretty easy one. If we go to the Direct Selection tool, click Off, and just select those points. Let me go to Command Y. So you see what's going on. I only have those po point, points selected. I go to Object, Path, Average, Horizontal, OK. Beautiful. Now it may not be at exactly the right height. We'd have to um, look that, uh, we'd have to work with that a little bit further. Uh, the next obvious thing for us to do is to replace 
the dots on the eyes and to give the L a dot, which of course uh, in the original typeface it doesn't have. Using my direct selection tool, select and gone. Uh, I'm going to change the heights of these a little bit before I, I pull the uh, dots over. And zooming in on Lebalin again, I'm going to pull it down here so I can see it really well. Uh, I'm just going to pull a, a guide down here. So it looks like the first eye is just the ordinary height, so that's good. The second eye is a bit higher. So direct selection tool, I'm going to pull that up. I'm holding down my shift key. I'm just kind of eyeballing this, but um, you could be a little more exact. The direct selection point, holding down my shift key. And I'm using my keyboard increment to push that down a bit. Now, in the interest of brevity, I'm going to do this a little bit roughly, but if I was actually doing a logo for a client, I would make sure it was absolutely exact. So now we can um, pull over our circles and we see that Smart Guides gives us a very easy guide to getting them centered. And these are just ordinary circles I made with the ellipse tool a little bit earlier to give us a little bit of a head start. Obviously the um, space should be consistent there. I think I've got it exactly right. Again, I would look in on that um, with a lot of detail. Now the F here is sort of interesting. I'm, I'm trying to understand what Lavallon did and it looks, I'm looking at the F and there are definitely some differences. For example, if I make a copy of this F and I put it here, I'm just going to hold down my option key to make a copy, I can quickly see that both of the arms of the F are shortened. Hmm, interesting. See, I didn't, had never observed that before. But um, as we work with this, I'm going to lock that A so that I can uh, work with the F a little bit more easily. Back to my selection tool. Um, and so on and so forth. So I, I think you can kind of see how this goes. Uh, logo designers are very, very meticulous people who will spend hours sweating the details that we're looking at right now. So Adobe Illustrator is your go-to application for creating professional logos. And if I were going to hand this one over to a client, I would probably group everything. You would see that the outlines are created and it's good to go. It could be scaled because it's vector content. It could be used teeny tiny small or scaled to the size of a billboard and it would still be sharp and beautiful.